I'm going to go ahead and record this. So I just hit record on uh, on the meeting. Um, that way we can be sure that all of the folks, if, if folks aren't able to join us today, um, we're going to have a copy of this available on the city's website that we can post on the um, GIA page. So I know we're letting just a few more folks in. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All righty. I'll go ahead and get us started. Jackie, will you keep an eye on the on the waiting room in case anyone else decides to join us. Um, but hello, welcome. I appreciate you all taking the time today to come and participate in our um, PCC Grants Opportunity Informational Webinar. So today we're gonna walk you through um, the various grant programs um, that will be rolled out through the Promotional Coordinating Committee uh, for next fiscal year. And so as we go through these, the grants will be available for events and activities that are taking a place next fiscal year, so after July 1st. However, um, as you all are aware, um, the application process has already opened for our cultural GIA. So we'll walk you through what it looks like. So we've got two grant programs this fiscal year. Um, one of the things that uh, the PCC has been working on um, over this past fiscal year is really trying to um, make modifications and, um, and changes to our existing cultural grants and aid program. Here at the city of San Luis Obispo, we've had quite a number of GIA grants and aid programs um, that often get confused um, based on kind of which organization and which advisory bodies running them. Um, and so in order to streamline that process, the city has been working through with the various uh, advisory bodies to rename the grant programs um, to make them available and a little bit more easy to understand. So when you see the grant program broken out like this, you're going to see that there, it looks like there's two separate programs and there is However, they're very similar. Um, so really our new grant program that will be rolled out for the second half of next fiscal year, the cultural or the cultural arts and community promotions grant um, is very similar to cultural grants and aid. And for those of you who've participated in cultural grants and aid prior to 2020, um, it'll look even more familiar to you. So I'm going to walk you through the two programs um, and how you as an organization can choose which program is best, the best fit for your um, event or activity. So we'll walk you through what that looks like. Um, I will say that we are going to really talk mostly about GIA, um, the existing cultural GIA program. We will hold a separate webinar when the application period opens for the Cultural Arts and Community Promotions Grant, the CACP grant. We'll hold a separate webinar for that, um, but I do want to walk you through both so you can understand the difference between them and then make the decision based on your organization, which is the right fit for you to, to apply for. So in general, um, the PCC has two grant programs this year, Cultural GIA and the CACP. Um, we have the PCC has earmarked approximately $100,000 for grant opportunities um, for nonprofit organizations that are offering events and activities in the city of SLO. So they're, they have earmarked about $100,000 available um, for the grant program overall. Now, for those of you who participated in GIA before, you'll remember we've, we went from a, a competitive process into a fixed grant process. Um, we went from being on a quarterly or on a monthly basis to a quarterly basis. And now next year, we're going to have one grant opportunity available through Cultural GIA. So Cultural GIA will only be for events that occur from July 1st through December 31st. So that'll be the distinguishing factor for your organization on which grant you will be seeking. So Cultural GIA for events that occur July 1st of 23 through December 31st of 23. 
Cultural GIA will be for the for that uh, application period will be a fixed grant amount, so four thousand dollar fixed grants. The application will run from May first through June fifteenth, and applications are due June fifteenth at twelve noon. So, first question to ask yourself is when does your event occur? If it occurs July first through December thirty first, cultural grants and aid is your answer. If your event will happen after December 31st, so January 1st through June 30th of 24, January 20 or January 1st of 2024 through June 30th of 2024, then the Cultural Arts and Community Promotions Grant will be your um, grant to seek. That will be a competitive grant application. So it'll be a competitive grant application process. The funding is TBD um, because we will see, we will have, we will take a look at what's available post the cultural GIA awards. The PCC will then evaluate how much funding is available and how much to dedicate towards um, the CACP grants for the second half of the year. That application um, period will run from August 1st through September 15th. The application will be due on September 15th at 12 noon. And again, more information will be coming out about this, but it's really just to show you if you don't fit into cultural GIA this application period July, for events that occur July 1st through December 31st, then there will be a secondary option for you, which will be the cultural arts and community promotions. The plan is that actually as we move beyond next fiscal year, the cultural arts and community promotions grant will be the name of uh, this grant program moving forward. So there are a number of folks um, that work together with the PCC in order to make these grant programs happen. So first and foremost, your, your um, promotional coordinating committee members, many of them are here on the call today. I see Annie on, I see John Thomas on, um, and I believe there are some others as well. I don't have everyone up on my screen right now. Um, but uh, those committee members have been working really, really hard at being able to um, develop a program that is um, the best approach for all of your organizations in order to seek this funding. Um, those. Uh, PCC members divide into subcommittees that actually review the applications that are submitted and then make recommendations back to the full committee. They also are your assigned grant liaisons. And so once your um, organization is awarded funding, you are then assigned a PCC liaison to work with um, if you have any questions throughout the process. In addition, um, there is city staff that helps support uh, this grant program. Um, and that city staff is me, I'm the tourism manager for the city, um, as well as Jackie Clark Charlesworth, who is our tourism analyst. So Jackie and I work closely together with the PCC to be able to operate this grant program. We are your contacts um, for the application, questions that you have on the agreement, questions that you may have as you're going through um, the implementation of the agreement and any questions about the grant funding and how it works and what you can use it on, um, Jackie and I will be your resource for those questions. In addition, we also have a partnership with the Slow Chamber of Commerce, and that partnership helps support um, the PR and marketing support for all of our grant recipients. And so Holly West, uh, the Director of Communications over at the Slow Chamber, will be your point of contact once your grant or once your organization is awarded a grant. Um, Holly will work with you on some of the marketing, the complimentary, complimentary public relations and marketing support offered by the Chamber as well as um, being a connection point for you to also getting your materials distributed through the visitor center. So that is the team behind the scenes um, that makes this program happen for you. So diving in first to cultural GIA. So cultural GIA for the 23, for what's remaining in our 23 year, um, this will be available for events that occur July 1st through December 31st of 2023. This will be for events and activities that are focused on social, cultural, or recreational benefit to our community at large. Cultural GIA will be a fixed grant amount at $4,000. 
her award. And the application period is open now. It opens on May 1st and it will run through June 15th. Applications are due June 15th at 12 noon. In terms of the use of the grant funds, so how can the funds, um, if you're awarded a grants and aid, um, how can it be, um, how can those funds be used? Now, so the GIA must be all used on marketing and advertising expenses related to the execution of the event, right? So all marketing and advertising costs, this cannot be for production costs, it must be for marketing and advertising related costs. Additionally, a minimum of 25% or $1,000 must be spent on those advertising expenses. Um, acceptable marketing expenses are things like your event marketing production related. So like things like graphic design or printing, um, limited contracted services like public relations or video or video production, um, social media expenses. So if you have to bring on a specific vendor to help you operate your social media accounts for the event. Um, or expenses related to enhancing um, a digital newsletter or an email campaign or dedicated web design services. Now, the big thing about marketing expenses is if you have a person within your organization whose job it is to do these types of, of um, pieces, that would not fit for this grant. This would be if your organization or your event or activity is bringing in an additional um, service in order specifically dedicated for the event, then those could be applicable for this grant. Advertising expenses are the actual cost of the paid media placement or the ad. So marketing expenses are kind of the things that go together to be able to create that ad or place that ad or to promote the event in general, where advertising expenses are the actual hard costs that your organization is paying out in order to place that advertisement. Those are the acceptable uses for the GIA grant. Grants are not given for the following expenses, office overhead or staff, um, equipment, rental of space, so rental of a venue, um, scholarships or honoraria, general organization operating expenses, general website maintenance and hosting, general email systems or, or um, base subscriptions, event permit fees, um, fees for performers, speakers, presenters, vendors, event uh, production or supplies, event decor or event swag. Think t-shirts. If you're getting t-shirts for your event, that is not something that would be able to be given as part of this grant. Um, organization eligibility. So who is eligible for GIA? So for cultural GIA, organizations must have a nonprofit status. And so you must have a nonprofit status prior to applying for the grant. Um, you must be responsible for the planning and the execution of the event that you'll be having. Um, you have to be in good standing with the city. And so that means that you'll, you know, you have to have ensured that you have the appropriate information for your organization and that you've followed protocols for previous grants as well. Organizations that have received prior promotional grant funding um, in previous years must have completed their final report in order to be able to receive the grant funding um, through cultural GIA. You also have to extend the um, program to the general public. So it can't be for something that's specific just to your organization or just to the members of your organization um, or to a, just a very specific population. It does need to be something that is accessible to the general public. And then organizations can only apply for one grant during the fiscal year period. And so again, it's important to note because this is when does the event occur? If it occurs July 1st through December 31st, that's GIA. If it um, if your event occurs January 1st through June 30th, then that's CACP. But as an organization, you can only apply for one of those um, types of grants. Event eligibility, it must occur between July 1st and December 31st. The event must be in person and take place here in the city of San Luis Obispo. 
It must be primarily focused on social, cultural, or recreational benefit to the community at large. Um, events that are political in nature or represent a sole party or candidate or affiliation are not eligible. So again, this is social, cultural, or recreational benefit. Events can also not be a primary purpose of fundraising or recognition. And so if this is the primary purpose of your event is fundraising, or this is an awards gala, or something that you're recognizing a member of your community or your organization, then that would not fit into this grant program. We understand that um, a goal of many of the events that are put on through um, through that receive funding through cultural GIA, many of those events do have a fundraising component, and that is totally okay. It just can't be the primary purpose. Think auction or that type of an experience. So there can be a fundraising element, um, but the primary purpose of the event or activity that you're putting on must be something that is um, has a social, cultural, or recreational benefit to the community at large. And then as always, um, meeting the current state and county health and safety guidelines. So how do you do this? Uh, we have an application process. Um, we have a GIA application that is available to be filled out. I'll show you an example of what that looks like next. Um, but basically, the um, the there actually are a couple of changes on this slide, but um, the PCC will review the GIA applications that come in and they'll recommend that award to the PCC at whole. The applications will be avail will be evaluated based on the set of criteria that has all been outlined within the application that you'll be completing. And then the PCC will give that approval to the um, to, to award the grants, and that will happen at that one point in the year. And so for this year, for GIA, it'll happen that one time, which will take place um, during the um, July meeting. So at the July meeting, all the applications will be then recommended in that public hearing um, for funding. And then once awarded, then your organization will be contacted to fill out to complete an agreement, um, and then checks will be distributed within 60 days of receiving that, that signed agreement. So here is the example of that GIA application. So this is available right now through the city's website. If you go to slowcity.org slash cultural GIA, it will take you to this landing page. Um, and within the landing page it has a ton of information about um, the grants and all of the details that I'm reviewing with you today. In addition, it has the button that you can click on, which will, which will take you into the application itself. Now this application, again, is due by June 15th at 12 noon. I will show you. This is the example of the specific landing page on the City of San Luis Obispo's website. You can always type into the search bar up here, Cultural GIA, and it will help you navigate to it. You can also put in the, um, the website, slowcity.org slash cultural GIA, and it will take you to this page as well. All of the information that we're reviewing today is all available on that website here, including the link right here to your um, grant application, which you will then be able to fill out. Um, you can click through section one. It'll take you through all of the information for um, what the requirements are. You'll select this button right here that you've read and agree to the program specifications. This information here walks you through all of the details that you'll need to know about how to apply. Finally, the next section right here is your application form. So you'll go ahead and fill out all of the information within the application form right here um, in this area. When you get to sections, uh, this section right here where you're listing your event, your expense type, you'll be able to choose, is it a marketing or an advertising expense? And then as you need, you can add additional rows to continue to plug in the information for the funding allocation. This section right here will be the total of kind of what all of that grant allocated amount is. Again, this for GIA, that's $4,000. So it should equal $4,000. Um, 
inside this section, you'll just read through all of this information. Yes, that you certify that it's um, filled out to the best of your ability um, and your knowledge. Um, so you'll select these two sections right here. You'll be able to put in your name, your title, your organization. Um, and then last but not least, under section five, you'll upload your tax exempt certificate and hit submit. And that will take you through um, the application process. That then comes into our office. It gets submitted into the system so that we can keep a digital record. Um, part of our sustainability um, initiatives are to move um, as paperless as possible. And so we have this then all available in a digital format um, that can then be shared with the um, GIA committee who is reviewing um, and making the recommendations to the full PCC. So in addition, um, once your event is awarded funding, um, then you get to be able to unlock some cultural GIA marketing support. And this is that marketing support directly through the Slow Chamber of Commerce. Um, so they will work with our GIA recipients for a number of initiatives and one-on-one -on -one trainings, tutorials, um, and kind of ways to help support your event in spreading the word um, about it taking place here in the city. Then once your event has concluded, one of the requirements is that you submit a final report. And so this final report is available as well. Um, if we go back to that landing page on the city's website, if you continue to scroll down right through this information, you'll get down here to the uh, cultural GIA final report. Important to note that if your event has, your organization has received funding this current fiscal year, you do need to make sure you submit that final report so you're in good standing. Um, but if it's your first time also receiving this grant, then this will be important for you to know. So as you complete the event, um, you'll remember to go on in and um, complete this final report um, through this section as well. So in terms of timeline, just to kind of review where we are with the timeline, this application period for cultural GIA is open now. It will be, um, it'll close June 15th. June 15th is at noon is when applications are due. Then the GI subcommittee will review those applications to make recommendations on those awards. And the PCC will hold that public hearing to consider those recommendations during their July 12th PCC meeting. So now kind of jumping through, if your organization did not fit for cultural GIA, your next question is, okay, so then what does work for me? And this is the Cultural Arts and Community Promotions Grant. So this will be the CACP grant. And again, as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, that we will actually have a dedicated um, webinar specifically to cultural, to the uh, cultural arts and community promotions grant once that application process opens, but I did just want to give you all a little bit of a preview so you know what to expect. So for cultural arts and community promotions grant, this is for um, this is for events that occur um, after uh, January 1st through June 30th. So this would be the second half of next fiscal year. The events and act, uh, activities must be focused on social, cultural, or recreational benefit to the community at large. So same requirement in that regard as cultural GIA. The big difference in this is that this will be a competitive grant application process. So for those of you who have completed the cultural grants and aid application prior to 2020, will be familiar with this type of a process. So what this is, is that you will apply for the grant based on the funds that you need to be able to um, market and promote the event that you're having. Um, and so we have some tiered guidelines of suggestions that you can follow but this will not be a fixed grant amount. This will be your organization coming forward saying, we need X amount of dollars to be able to support these specific marketing and promotional components of um, the production of our event. And we're seeking funds to be able to do that. So that means that it will be a competitive grant process. That application process will be open August 1st through September 15th. And those applications will be due September 15th at 12 noon. So some of the proposed um, 
cultural arts and community promotions grant uh, structure is it will be based on various tiers. And so the first tier will be for, um, be, you know, kind of around that 500 to 3000 um, range. This will be for organizations that are really reaching just the city of San Luis Obispo residents. Um, you're going to be placing your marketing, your, the city's logo on all your marketing materials, a little bit of a more local um, event and a local outreach perspective. Tier two will be folks that are um, trying to promote their event more regionally. Um, so throughout the county or, you know, kind of within maybe a 50 mile-ish radius um, here within the city. So that's those grant requests make sense to roughly fall between 3,000 to 7,500. And then tier three will be destination driven events. So getting primarily focused on getting people into San Luis Obispo to um, participate in the event. And that would be then range of about 7,500, potentially even up to 20,000, depending on the funds that are available. Your organization does not have to necessarily just check the box of tier one, tier two, or tier three. You will be, these are guidelines to help you think about kind of what is the funding amount that I'm asking for and um, what is my, my goal and how I'm targeting um, the outreach for this event. So organization eligibility for cultural arts and community promotions, there is a lot of information on this slide and don't worry, this will all be outlined for you. Um, the big component of the um, cultural arts and community promotions grant is that there will be the ability to have fiscal sponsorship. So we've definitely received questions of organizations that, that fall under a fiscal sponsor um, and are looking to um, work with a fiscal sponsor in order to be able to apply for event funding. And so as we move from cultural GIA into um, uh, cultural arts and community promotions grant, um, that will be something um, that will be accessible. So a definition of a fiscal sponsor um, is a nonprofit organization that provides fiduciary oversight, financial management, and other administrative services to help build the capacity of a, of a different charitable organization. Um, and so you know if your organization uses a fiscal sponsor or if not, then you must hold that 501c3 or c6 status, that nonprofit status on your own. So the cultural arts and community promotions timeline, this is kind of a general overview um, of how we see moving through this program. So again, you as an organization will decide which is the right fit for your event or activity. Is it cultural GIA? Does it happen before uh, December 31st? Or is it cultural arts and community promotions because it happens after January 1st? And so application period for CACP will be August 1st through September 15th. The applications are due September 15th at 12 noon. Um, the, the subcommittee will then review those applications to make recommendations back to the PCC. The PCC will hear, will hold the public hearing to consider those applications and those awards at their October meeting. Um, and as I mentioned before, we will have a lot more information to come specifically on this um, program, um, but following the close of the cultural GIA period and as we roll out the new application for CACP, we'll hold another one of these webinars to really dive into the details of that further. So, um, Additional questions that you may have, uh, we will we can open this up and if there are questions, we can have you add them into the chat um, or you can raise your hand and we can um, navigate through any questions you may have. You can also use my email address right here, mkano, C-A-N-O, at slowcity.org. Feel free to email me any of those questions that you have also. Um, and as I mentioned, the, um, the application for cultural GIA is open now and is available. We've already had a couple of organizations already submit their application, so hats off to some of you. Um, but uh, it's still, it is open and available, so you can go ahead and fill that out now. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Jackie, are there any questions in the chat? No, but I do think Shirley had a question, um, and she was maybe going to unmute and ask.
Charlie, can you hear us? It looks like she's unmuted, but I can't hear her. So Shirley, if you want to pop it in the chat, we can go ahead and ask your question and answer it. And in the meantime, if anyone else has any other questions about the um, cultural GIA or the new CACP grant, feel free to pop them in the chat um, or you can raise your virtual hand. Um, we'd be happy to call on you that way as well. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, uh, this is Cliff Swanson. Uh, I'm sure you've considered my questions, but uh, what about groups that uh, have a series for an entire year, like the symphony or the master chorale or other uh, annual length organizations? Yeah, so for series, so if you have a series of events that potentially maybe start in September and go through March or something, right, maybe they go between both grant periods, right. um, you would want to apply in the period that the series starts. So if it is a two, you know, if it goes over multiple, like if it all, if it kicks off prior to December 31st, then you would want to apply for cultural GIA. If the series kicks off after January 1st, on or after January 1st, then you would apply for the cultural arts and community promotions. That's what I presumed. Yep. Uh, so uh, uh, let me see if I have another question along those lines. Um, in other words, the money can be spent in the second period. Um, if you get the grant for the for the GIA, can you spend it through the year? Or for does the, it have for, right. For the organizations that have um, series, the answer would be yes, because that would be the only way that you are promoting your event. The reality is in a lot of those cases is that you're promoting the series as a whole at the time that the series is kicking off. Um, but I know different organizations kind of roll that out in different ways. Um, but you would want to apply for what the start of the series is, um, and then you would be able to um, spend based on that. So okay. you wouldn't be able to apply for just, for example, the one, maybe if it if it's a concert that's just as in the fall, and then you have another in the spring, your organization needs to choose just one grant. So you can apply as a series, you can apply for just the event in the fall or just the event in the spring, um, but your organization can then decide which works best um, for your individual approach. Okay, I thought I understood it until you just said that. Uh, if you wanted to buy TV advertising for your fall concert, and TV advertising for your spring concert. Yep. You can't yep. take that $4,000 and spread it out through the year? You can. And oh, so okay. if you, because you would be applying as a series then, uh, and so it. your series would then fall under cultural GIA and you'd be able to spend it through the duration of your series. Okay, I get it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There was a question in the chat. Is that what you're going to say, Jackie? Okay. Oh, yep. So there was a question in the chat about um, any type of DEI initiative or sustainability initiative component for either grant this year. And so the answer is that there is questions regarding the um, G, uh, regarding both sustainability and DEI um, within the grant. There is no additional bonus grant being offered this year, um, but it is included as part of the grant consideration. So you'll see here I've highlighted any sustainability practices related to your event. And then we also have describe how the organization will encourage inclusive participation from diverse populations um, for this event. And so that is, is a component of, um, of the questions that you'll be answering as part of the application. And that is consistent as well um, with the application for the CACP. There'll be um, required fields that you have to complete regarding that. Um, okay, Shirley, it looks like I see your question. And now is the budget only $4,000 or only for the entire event budget? So the 
the grant is $4,000. So your event budget is your event budget. And so you know what that looks like um, and you will you can describe that to us. Um, when we're asking about the grant funding allocation, that is specifically under GIA, that's specifically for the $4,000 that you would be granted, your organization would be granted um, for um, uh, marketing and advertising expenditures. So you must spend that full $4,000 on marketing and advertising expenditures. Um, and so in addition, your, your event likely has a much larger budget than that um, to be able to spend on the production and all the other components um, that would take place for the production and, and being able to put on your event. This grant funding must be used specifically for marketing and advertising. Um, so then the next question within that was give an example of how funds can be used to enhance digital newsletters or web design services. So great question. Um, an example for web design is that you, your organization may already have an existing website. And so maintenance of that website or um, being able to, you know, update that website, that would not be something that you would, you would be able to fund through this um, through this grant. However, if you are needing to um, pay someone to build out a microsite or a specific landing page or something specific around the marketing and advertising for this event, that would fit into this grant expenditure. So if it's regular maintenance or regular operations of your existing website, then it wouldn't work. But if it is something that's specifically being um, uh, spent for just the promotion of this event, um, that would be something that could fit. Same thing with digital newsletters. And so if you're, um, if you are um, needing to send out design put together, have a uh, copy written, whatever that looks like to do, to be able to create newsletters or email emails that you're, you're sending out specific for the promotion and marketing of the event, um, then these funds would be able to be used for that. It would not be able to be used for your regular organization email um, that you'd be sending out. So it has to be directly related to um, the marketing and promotion of the event. And um, the copy of the city's core values, certainly. And so those are available on the city's website. We can add a link into that as well um, if you would like to be able to take a look at that. Um, but we can also, I can see, I didn't have it up right in front of me, um, but I can see if I can navigate to that while I'm online with you all, or maybe Jackie can help me and we can pot it, pop, pop it into the chat for you. <laughs> Perfect. Another question. Yes. Very, very quick. Are these slides available uh, online so that someone else could access them? So this this session is being recorded, and we will record. We will post the recording of the session within the week, and so um, it'll be up that way so that folks can also hear all the Q and A that came in as well. Okay. Great. Yeah. And all of that will be posted to the to slowcity.org slash cultural GIA. All right. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any other hands up. Um, or any additional questions that I'm seeing in the chat. Well, if that is the case, then thank you all so much. Again, if you need to email me any additional questions that you think of after the fact, please feel free to use my email address, mkno.slowcity.org, um, and we would be happy to, um, to get back to you on those. So thank you again so much. We really look forward to receiving and, and reviewing all the applications that, that your organizations are considering to apply. Um, we The PCC has been working really, really hard on this program, um, and we're excited to see what events and activities your organizations will be bringing to SLOW. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.